Well, first of all, Dr. Lars, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to join us today. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Yes, happy to be here. Thanks. So we're, we're talking about vaccine hesitancy. What, what is vaccine hesitancy? Well, vaccine hesitancy is really, it's actually quite a recent term. I mean, we, in a lot of the literature and even the news coverage, uh, the world was divided into the pro and the anti-vaccine people. And I think uh, it was probably about five years ago, uh, four or five years ago, that the term vaccine hesitancy started to emerge. And at first I was a bit uh, hesitant about the word because it sounded a bit negative to me. Yeah. We, our research group is called the Vaccine Confidence uh, Project, which to me had a bit of a more positive ring. On the other hand, uh, what I've grown to appreciate about the term hesitancy is that it acknowledges that Frankly, most of the people asking questions about vaccines are not refusers. They're not anti-vaccine um, wholeheartedly. They're asking some sometimes very reasonable questions and sometimes um, getting the information confused a bit and sometimes having real genuine concerns that need to be investigated. Why would somebody be hesitant about accepting a vaccine? Well, one of the things we've been doing, and certainly with the WHO also, World Health Organization, um, we've been doing mapping globally to look at what are the reasons. Because you can take the same vaccine and follow it around the world, and the reasons that people hesitate about it can be highly varied. Right. Varied by culture, religion, politics, safety, um, basic literacy, uh, so it's, it's varied. There is a uh, kind of a menu of things, but I would never count on any one of them without actually trying to find out okay. as being the reason for hesitancy. Is this a big problem? I think we need to be concerned because it has been growing and more importantly, it has uh, led to outbreaks of disease and death. Okay. Um, not too long ago, just a couple months ago, we had a, a child die of diphtheria in Spain. Uh, diphtheria, there's no excuse in this day and age for a child to die of diphtheria. And the parents had refused a vaccine for diphtheria. It was the first case that Spain had seen in 30 years. Um, and on top of it, the child died. So, and we've, they're not, that's not the only case. So I think the wake-up call to the public health community when it started to be taken more seriously is when diseases started to um, er er come back um, as a consequence of this hesitancy and refusal. Is this particularly a big issue with developing countries? I think you see more of it perhaps in Europe, the US, Australia, Japan, uh, in more developed economies in the general population. Where you see it in a lot of the, uh, the poorer countries is pockets of right. either marginalized people, people feel like they're not getting attention or they're not trusting, um, or they had a, a safety issue or a perceived safety issue. So they're very uh, issue-specific reasons and less of the widespread general hesitancy that we're seeing here. What should we do about it? Well, I think the public is crying out for a conversation. I think the public health community has taken the, uh, the trust of the public for granted for a bit too long. Uh, when vaccines were first introduced, there was uh, more attention to it saying what they are, what they're for, why we need them. And also there was a lot more of the presence of the diseases they were preventing. Sure. So the motivation to take the vaccines was a bit different than it is now. Now we want to maintain the low levels of disease, but also there are more and more vaccines coming down the pipeline, which is great on the one hand, but there's a limit to, I mean, I think a number of parents are saying, whoa, you know, <laughs> how many can my small, right now healthy baby uh, tolerate. And so it's not just a matter of I want it or I don't want it. It's maybe can I postpone it? Um, do I need all of them? Is it still relevant for me? Those kind of sometimes reasonable questions. Uh, finally, Dr. Larson, the, the, the point you make is very much a commentary overall, isn't it, with public health? Yeah. 
the trust me I'm a doctor is uh, <laughs> uh, doesn't doesn't get too far these days. Well, thank you very much indeed, Dr. Lars, for coming to join us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.